All right, so the best SMMA niche to scale in 2023, and by the end of this video, my goal is for if you're a beginner to have a niche picked and know exactly how to scale it up. If you have clients already, but you're unsure about your niche, this video will explain if your niche is the right one and exactly what to pick if it's not the right one. And thirdly, if you are established, if you have systems, if you have the team, exactly how to scale up with your current system, with your current case studies, how to book more meetings, how to sign more clients, and exactly how we'd recommend going about that. So. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ethan Walby. I'm the co-founder of Agency Growth Partner. We've been helping tons and tons and tons and tons of established marketing agencies increase revenue by 50 to 100K a month within six to nine months. And I've also created a brand new step-by-step -step walkthrough video explaining exactly how we do increase you know, you know, these revenue amounts by 50 to 100K a month for our agency clients. And if you wanna check this out after this video, there'll be a link in the description. It'll take you to this page and you can just watch it. And in this video, it's also gonna explain how you can get a ton of value completely free, how you can get access to our systems, our resources, all of that, again, completely free, uh, just because we wanna help out as much as possible. So, my goal for this video, right, the best SMMA niche, I could easily just say, you know, do short form content, do e-commerce brands, help chiropractors, and the thing is, that may help in the short term. But what I wanna do, is help in the short term, but also teach you how to think. And by all means, this isn't straight from me. I learned from people making hundreds and hundreds of millions, potentially even billions. And I'm just, you know, providing what I learned from them in order to how to think, how to think more clearly, how to actually go about this in business, in life, and whatever. And yeah, just because I genuinely care, I want you to actually learn the skills on how to do this as opposed to just you know, spending all your time on YouTube looking for the best agency offer in 2023, the best niche in 2023, the best script in 2023, because the thing is, it's not gonna solve your problems long-term. So, the prerequisites, the requirements, the things you need for a good niche. Firstly, before I go on to the specifics, can you find the people that you wanna work with, right? And if you're helping businesses, yes, you can, right? It's just a matter of, can you use a software to find them? Can you use a tool to find them? Can you search them on Google? If yes, good, that's fine. Do they have money, okay? You most likely cannot sell a $20,000 retainer service teaching high school students how to study for exams, you know, and sell it for $20,000. Because as much as they might need it, and I can think of a lot of people that need it, as much as they need it, they can't afford it. So it's pretty much pointless. So what I'd recommend is you go after businesses, okay? If you're offering marketing services, go for businesses. But avoid the small ones because if you're gonna put all this time and energy into finding them, searching, reaching out to them and working with them, you might as well go for the big ones, right? You might as well go for the big ones. Don't go for the pizza shop that just started down the road last week. You know, go for people who have things established, they have team, they have the systems, and they, have a give, they give you a good foundation for you to just help them and scale them up. Okay, you also get better results and a better experience overall. Then, do they have a problem? And the thing is, if you're helping businesses, they have a problem because I can almost guarantee that if they run a business, they want more money. That is the absolute biggest problem. Businesses don't have enough money. So if you can help them make more money, you are doing fine, you've picked the right niche. And the thing is, you just need to find a problem. Right? Even if it's not money directly, it can still impact their revenue in some way. So we have clients who increase the efficiency of companies. So they have tools which allow you know, their employees of the people that they help to get more done in less time. And what you can do is you can say, if we save you a thousand hours a week and you charge or you pay $10 an hour, this is just examples, you will make this much extra money using our services. So as long as you're solving something tied to money or income generation, you're doing fine. Just don't sell like a $10,000 new printer ink that isn't gonna solve any direct problem, okay? This should be pretty straightforward. Then, what I have here are three principles that make no sense until I explain them. And I did it that way so that you watch the video, okay? That's all. I made it not make sense or sound very weird um, so that I can explain them and you watch the video till the end. Right, so proof is the best offer. Now, to illustrate this point, 
we take on, I'd say 90%, 85% of our clients are in our e-commerce agencies, right? So they help e-commerce brands in some ways with marketing, with advertising, whatever it might be. And when they come to us, they usually have a very wide variety of case studies. So case studies in food and beverage, in fashion, in this one, in this one, in this one. And the reason, you know, the reason for that is because before they work with us, they have no way of getting in contact with the people that they want to work with. They have no proactive outreach method. They have no client acquisition method. So they just take whoever comes to them. And because of that, because they need the cash flow, they just take whoever comes to them. So they have case studies all over the place. And they always ask, Ethan, who should we reach out to first? And I always tell them, proof is the best offer. So if they have 10 case studies in the fashion niche, the best, best niche for them to scale is the fashion niche because they have the most proof, right? Anyone, and why I say it's the best offer is because anyone can say, hey, we're gonna increase your revenue by 10 million in 60 days. And then they ask, cool, what proof do you have? They're like, I don't, right? And that's not very, not very good. So the best proof or the best offer is just having tons of proof. Because if you can say, Hey, we helped Nike, we helped Adidas, we helped Gucci, we helped Louis Vuitton, we helped Dior. Can we do this for your, you know, shoe shop? They'll be like, yes, you can. So the best niche to scale is the one where you have case studies. Now, if you don't have case studies, that's fine, because I know someone's going to ask in the comments. If you don't have case studies, go for one where you have the most experience. And if you haven't worked in the actual niche, then you can pretty much just pick anyone because you have no experience anywhere. So you're in a win-win situation, okay? Or just pick one where you're most interested. So if you like fashion, go after fashion. If you like, I mean, food, go after food, you know? Then, better is worse, okay? Now, the point that I made here, because I know this one makes no sense, and I almost forgot what I put there in the first place. The reason I put better is worse is because what you're gonna see is, as soon as someone says, this is the best niche, Right, as soon as someone says, this is the best niche, you're just gonna see everyone gravitate to that one niche. So let me give an example. Right, if you are, I mean, young, and you're in the agency space, you know Eman, you know Eman Gadget. He, da- he did the e-commerce agency, that as well. Because so many people follow him, because he runs an e-commerce agency, because he has hundreds of thousands of followers, and everyone sees that one working, Everyone's doing e-commerce now. And I'm not saying it's purely because of him, but it's definitely an impact. So they see someone doing well in one niche and then everyone just goes there. And you know what happens? It becomes extremely difficult. I mean, if you're not AGP, if you're not us, then it becomes very difficult to actually book meetings to sign clients in this niche. I mean, for us, it's very easy at this point. But, you know, it just becomes difficult. So all the people trying to do e-commerce, when they start out, they're just having the worst time of their lives. Right. So in reality, the best niches are the ones where no one else is doing. Right. But don't take this to the extreme, because if literally no one is doing it, right, if literally no one is doing it, then it might be there might be a reason. But the thinking behind this is to do what the do what the majority isn't doing. So. The thing I'm seeing now is everyone's gravitating towards short form content creation, right? That's like the big one now. Everyone's doing that. And the thing is, any niche can work. That one can work. But now because everyone's doing it and I probably get 20 messages about it per day. And again, there's nothing wrong with with them messaging me. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's just, I'm seeing it everywhere. So because I'm seeing it everywhere, everyone looks like a commodity. Everyone looks the same. So if everyone's doing this, it's in your best interest to do something else because it's unique, because it'll stand out. And again, this is something we do for all of our clients as well. We've helped them to build our brand new offer. Uh, if you want, you can just check this out. We've helped them to build a brand new offer to stand out, book more meetings, increase close percentage, raise the prices, all this. Um, but yeah, this is just a way to think about it, right? So if everyone's doing one thing, it's probably not the best thing to do, okay? Because any niche can work, as long as they have money and a problem, and you can find them. And thirdly, scale is doing the most boring. So, right, I said the best SMA niche to scale, right? And the reason I mentioned scale 
is because it's cool to sign a couple of clients, but if you want to scale up, you want to sign a lot consistently, systematically, predictably, then the best way to do this is by doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over until you get so bored that you question everything. But that's really what scale is. It's just doing the same things repeatedly. So this point is about, you know, how to scale up. Now, people think when you start scaling, when you start growing your business, everything starts changing. It becomes like you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. You have 10 different offers, 12 different price points, five different niches. But the reality is that the people who scale the most effectively, the people who scale the most effectively do the least things. Now, they focus on the main things. They keep the main thing the main thing. So the best niche to scale is picking one niche and only doing that one. And the benefits of that is you become the expert in that niche. But the thing is, right, you become the expert. So everyone understands you'll get better results because you do the same thing over and over and over. But the other side of this is that if you only help dentists, in Omaha, in the United States. If you only help dentists in Omaha, okay, let me actually use a different example. If you only help um, fashion brands, right, fashion e-commerce brands, if you only help them, every single person that you help can refer you to another fashion brand, right? So the thing is, your referrals are all in the same industry. I hope this makes sense. So. If you get a referral from a fashion brand, they most likely know other fashion brands and then they'll just refer you to other ones. And the thing is, you're just going to get more and it's not like you have to do something new. You just have to do the same thing that's already working for the initial client. Okay. So if you got results for fashion brand number one, you just have to duplicate exactly what you're doing for fashion brand number two. You don't have to reinvent the wheel because you just have the same thing over and over. So that's why I say scale is doing the most boring because you're not actually doing anything different, you're just doing more of the same thing. So your goal, and I'm not saying what you should or shouldn't do, but what I'd recommend is that your goal should be to only help one type of client, one type of niche. Because if you look at Alex Omozi, when he started, he only did gyms. And he only did gyms because he could just copy and paste the delivery between everyone, right? So that's why we only help established marketing agencies because our delivery stays the same for every single client that we help. So it takes less effort every single time because we already know how to do it and we just copy and paste it between them. Right, so I hope these points made sense. I hope it cleared up your thinking. I hope it gave you another way to look at things in terms of what niche to pick, right? Because in reality, and I'll tell you this now, you've gotten to the end of the video, this is where the truth comes out. Every single niche works or any niche can work. You just need to stick to it, you just need to pick it. You just need to figure it out because the thing is, if you're helping a business and you're helping them make more money and you're making them more money than they're paying you, you're doing a great job, right? That's all you need to do. And if you feel like things are boring, you know, you're doing the same thing over and over and over. Like, what? when does it get fun? Sorry to break it to you, but scale is doing the same thing over and over and over. So again, I hope this makes sense. I hope you found this useful. And again, if you want some more information, if you run an established business, steps agency right you can check the link in the description we'll go into a lot more detail on how we work how things go and yeah i'll talk to you in the next one